Bullet Train's a new action film starring Brad Pitt. And contrary to the parents who brought their seven-year-old child into this film, it's not geared towards kids. Although to be fair, there are a lot of Thomas the Tank Engine references. Arguably too many. Bullet Train's- oh, hang on, I got a call from Sandra Bullock doing her sexy voice on the phone. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. She's saying you should subscribe to the channel. I mean, I didn't say it, Sandra did. And this is a remote control. I couldn't find my phone and I didn't want to leave, so that's, what we're, that's where we're at. The premise of Bullet Train is a simple one. We have a rogues gallery of unsavory individuals boarding this high-speed vehicle, and their goal is to essentially kill each other. Actually, each character has a very specific goal in mind, but when it all boils down, there's gonna be a lot of death on this train. And while this premise is simple on paper, holy crap, the final product is not. There are a lot of plot threads going on, and most of it doesn't really add up until the final moments of the picture, one of which doesn't even add up until the credits start to roll. So stick around for a minute or so before that little ending shows up. Then you can get that one final aha moment in a picture that's full of them. The term subverting expectations has been ruined over the years, mainly by people working on Disney films, but this movie does it right. Brad Pitt gets top billing here, and even though he is the main character, there are several other actors that have just as much screen time. Lemon and Tangerine being amongst a couple, and they were fantastic. Aaron Taylor Johnson hasn't impressed me in a movie since Kick-Ass, so I thought his whole acting career was kind of a fluke, a one-off. But man, he's good in this. It took me a long time to realize it was even him. He and Brian Tyree Henry have a fantastic chemistry. It reminded me of older movies like Snatch, where there's some really funny back and forth dialogue, and it really does a good job of breaking up some of the action moments. And there are some amazing action sequences. When the trailers came out, I thought, okay, it's John Wick on a train. The fighting, the action, isn't quite presented the same way as that. This is from the guy who did Atomic Blonde, Deadpool 2, and Fast and the Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw, so it's far more over the top than Wick gets. The film's incredibly stylized too, it's got a theme and it sticks with it. Now, one of the turnoffs for me in the first half of this picture were the massive amount of backstories taking place. This is not a linear story. There are like five or six flashbacks, some going back a year, some going back decades. But just like the train these passengers are on, you too have to stay on board this script because it will get revealed by the time things start to wrap up, and I think it pays off tremendously well. That said, we're again at two hours. My biggest gripe with films is they overstay their welcome. Although I was really enjoying this film all the way through, it could have been tightened up quite a bit. We could have cut off 15, 20 minutes and had a perfect running film. Instead, the train goes a little long, it goes off the tracks, and I think I could probably come up with a few more train analogies, but I'm gonna leave it there. When I saw the different actors in this, the first thing that jumped to my mind was, okay, stunt casting. We have Joey King for the younger audience. We got Bad Bunny for a different audience, I think, I don't know. They were all really good here. And Joey King specifically, not really a fan of hers. I, I guess I only know her from the kissing booth and that princess movie on Hulu, both of which were pretty bad. She was actually great in this. And for the first time I said, okay, I get it, Aaron Taylor Johnson. I get it, Joey King. You deserve your spot in Hollywood. What we have here is a very fun, very adult, no nudity or, or penetration of any sort, it's short for penetration, but there's a lot of sword play, knife throwing, stabbing, just different types of death across the board, very creatively handled most of the time. Man, I hope that seven-year-old likes Thomas the Tank Engine. She's gonna feel pretty out of place watching this movie. Don't go into this film expecting realism, not even to the level John Wick gives us, which is already kind of cartoonish. Here though, it's intentionally over the top, massively stylized. I really think that the director wanted to do a Domino film based on the character from Deadpool 2, but didn't have the rights or they just didn't want to make that movie. And he thought, okay, how can I use that luck angle again and really drive that home as the central point of this picture, along with being able to do these larger than life moments. And he succeeds on all fronts. I had a hell of a time with this movie. Go in knowing it's a bit long. Go in knowing it's not meant to be taken seriously. You get a ton of great action, a good soundtrack, Fantastic performances, I just, I don't see how this is a miss for many. Oftentimes, along with the review, you get a bonus, which is the movie theater experience. The audience was, you know, okay, kind of garbage. My row had three phone users. Uh, their screen brightness was all the way down, at least. 
so I would just get little fireflies popping up here and there. Nothing. I've, I've had worse. <laughs> I've had a lot worse. Uh, the movie started, we had about five minutes of, of uh, technical difficulties from the dipshits behind us. There was a Boo Boo and Yogi Bear behind us who brought an entire picnic basket in. They, they set up a nice shop, a buffet of sorts. They had like tin cans rattling around, dropped them on the ground four or five times. I think there was a canteen. It really was quite the experience. Like they were setting up a potluck dinner from 1935. Well, there are my thoughts on Bullet Train. Let me know in the comments if you're excited about this. I was really happy to see Brad Pitt again, having some fun. I, I miss Brad Pitt from, from Snatch and Fight Club. That, that's my Brad Pitt. And I have to say, this has been a pretty solid year so far for movies that aren't superhero related. All right, take care. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Like the video if you had some fun here. And I'll see you next time.